I now give the floor to Cecilia Malmström, European Commissioner for Home Affairs. Thank you very much, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a true pleasure to be here to celebrate Europe Day with you in this magnificent hall. Today it is the 9th of May, and if we look forward the 9th of May in 2030, the world will look quite different. That's only 17 years away, but many things, predictable and unpredictable, would have changed. We would all have changed. But we can be sure of that we want to live in a prosperous and peaceful Europe. We want that for us, for our children, for our grandchildren. We want to be able to have a good doctor if we need one, and we want our children and our grandchildren to have access to education and to a decent job. That's what I want for my children. We cannot take that for granted with the crisis. As has been mentioned all through the day today, we are going through, and you all know it, a very, very severe crisis, and it will take time before we get it back on track. We will also be much older, as was said in the introduction. There will be very little indigenous growth population in some countries, and the population of the working age will have shrunk. So how do we respond to this? And let me give you some reflections. Of course, we do need to step up all our efforts to stimulate economic growth. We need to do the reforms, we need to increase labor participation. Europe cannot afford to have the world's best educated housewives any longer. We need to work longer, I'm sorry. We need to do educational reforms, we need to increase the possibilities to move in the internal market, and we need to address youth unemployment. But we also need to make much better use of the skills and talents that we already have here in Europe, particularly among migrants and refugees. Too many of them have no job at all or a job below their level. And many of them are citizens or aspiring to become. We also know that there is an untapped potential of entrepreneurship here, but unemployment is, unless, uh, alas, very high. Some countries do better than others, and we need to learn the lessons from here. Migrants and refugees have a pool of skills and talents that is largely untapped, untapped and we need to make use of it. And while stepping up the efforts to integration, we should not deny the fat challenges, of course. People today are facing a very difficult situation. People feel insecure about their own future. And that environment creates a very fertile ground for populist, xenophobic, and even racist movements. And that requires a leadership from all of us to stand up to that and to easy solutions and to finding uh, and, and the risk that migrants become the scapegoats of these miseries. We also need to make difficult political choices. How do we address the pressure of more people coming in the cities, for instance? How do we provide housing, social services? How do local authorities find the answers to do what it takes to manage increasingly diverse societies? Because absorbing new citizens and migrants is not easy. But we do want an inclusive Europe. We have to make it happen. We have to meet that challenge. Of course, it's a two-way process, integration. Migrants would be required to do their part. Of course, like all citizens, follow the law, learning to speak the language, um, and do what they can to integrate su successfully. At the same time, the majority society needs to make sure that people are treated as full members of a society with the rights and obligations to go with that. The new Italian minister spoke very passionately about citizenship. This is an issue that, of course, is decided in every country. There are no harmonized European laws on that. But it is, of course, true that if you also have the possibilities to become a citizen in your new community, you will have a stronger feeling of belonging. So therefore, I welcome very much that this is discussed in Italy and elsewhere as well. And we should also stop criminalizing people because they cannot show the right papers and stop to blame migrants for problems they have not caused. This is the only way to enable migrants to show that they, what they want to do, to be full part of our societies, and like all of us, live well in our communities, provide for our families. We do have very high unemployment. Millions of people are unemployed, and this is, of course, a daily tragedy for the individual, for the society, and for our economies. 
But at the same time, we also know that there are serious labour shortages in Europe. Millions of jobs remain and will remain in the future unfilled. So how do we deal with this paradox? We are short of people in some sectors, engineering, IT sector, health sector, etc. And we also have the paradox of millions of unemployed. And this, again, demands a very strong leadership for the from the policy level. Because Europe, in order to grow and to come out of the economy, need the right skilled people. We need to produce sufficient people equipped with the right skills of today. Not only high skills, medium skills and low skills as well. And while many Europeans are out of job, business also have to look elsewhere. And this is a very difficult message to send. But our demographic um, development, as has been talked about earlier with this panel, is indeed a huge challenge for the future. From the European Union side, we are trying to put some pieces in place here. The first building blocks of a common European migration policy. We have a blue card, uh, there are proposals on the, on the um, table to make it easier for um, specialists in um, big international companies to travel from outside Europe to come here and work, for seasonal workers, for students and researchers as well. They are being negotiated. It is not easy to find political agreement on this for the moment. We also have to adapt to the changing mobility patterns. The people in the world today, increasing, uh, an increasing amount of them, can choose where to go. And many of them will not choose Europe. We need to make Europe an attractive place to come to. We can see international statistics showing that people show to, uh, tend to go elsewhere than in Europe. And we won't need them to come here. So we have to put in place flexible admission policies. We need to reform our visa policies. We must be clear about the skills that we need. We need to identify the labor sectors that have potentials. And we need to work, of course, with business to define our policies. And this we need to do in a transparent way in the labor market um, and invest in matching the skills. And we need to reach out the, to the countries where people could come from. And above all, again, we need to make Europe an attractive place to come where people don't only, cannot only come on a sort of bureaucratic way, but also want to come, where they feel welcome. Everybody has a role here, politicians and policymakers, of course, academics, the business sector and media. And we all need to contribute to change the attitude. Political leadership needs to show the courage to tell the truth about the current situation. It's about explaining why we need these people and how we make it possible. Academics have a very important role to play to dismantle some of the worst myths and to show the facts and the evidence of what our societies look like today, what they will look like in the future, and what role migration can play. We need business leaders to step in and to tell about the demands and their expectations and their arguments. And the role of media is important to give migration a human face, giving migrants a voice, getting away from the stereotypes. So to conclude, migration and citizenship are areas that will have a big influence on how Europe will evolve the coming years. Migrants are both asylum seekers who will come to us and to ask for shelter and international protection. And I am very happy that we very soon will have common rules and standards on how to receive people who come and ask for protection here. Many of these people who come have, of course, horrible experiences, but they are also very often skilled and they must be given a possibility to realize and to fulfill their dreams and a potential in the new country. We also, other types of migrants that we have, we need to look at the, the, the possibilities of well-managed migrations for them, for our citizens, and for our economy. And how we respond to this depends on whether Europe comes out stronger or weaker, economically, socially, or culturally. To reap the benefits of migration, we need open, transparent politics, realistic policies, and strong leadership. We need Europe open to the world, a Europe that gives people the opportunities they deserve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for being so frank and blunt in what you had to explain to us.